All right, folks. So I was contacted by the folks at Gable Antenna or Gable Radio. I'm not 100% sure what their name is. I think it's Gable Antenna, but what do I know? And they asked if I would review this product. It's their GRA uh, 7350TC, and it's a vertical antenna designed for use for portable operations. I like antennas. So I said, yeah, send it on over. And it says it's good from 3.5 to 30 slash 50 megahertz. So this would be 80 meter through 6 meter band. 30 megahertz is the high end of the 10 meter band. If you take a look at this package, I really like this bag that it came in. A lot of antennas come this way because it's uh, easy to put this thing in here, store it, and pack it up in your bag or whatever. But it says it's 130 watts SSB. So that's probably somewhere around 60 to 75 uh, digital. Max length, it says 102.3 inches or 2.6 meters. Now, I don't know if that is the extendable whip that goes with this thing or if that's the whip and the various coils. Um, weight is 0.8 pounds, impedance 50 ohms, connector is 3824, which is pretty handy because that's what we use in the United States. A lot of these antennas actually come with an M10 connector, and that's not so handy. Uh, and if you take a look at this, it says it's a quarter wave HF 50 megahertz uh, antenna. So I want to talk a little bit about what comes in it. And the first thing we'll look at is this coil. This is a fixed coil that's not adjustable. And according to the instructions, it came with instructions too. We'll, we'll take a quick look at these as well. But uh, let's see if I can figure out how to open these. That coil right here is what you need to add if you wanted to operate on 80 uh, meters. So if, if you're not going to do that, just leave that thing at home. You have your whip and then you have your adjustable coil or variable coil at the bottom. An antenna like this will generally exhibit some capacitance when you're trying to use it on uh, lower frequencies where this antenna isn't quite a quarter wavelength long. It might be for 10 meters. I'm sure it is for 6 and 2 meters. It doesn't say anything about 2 meters on the packaging. But what you want to do is you add a coil like this to cancel out that capacitance and add inductance. Some people think that this makes it physically longer. And while it does make it a little bit physically longer, what it doesn't do is it doesn't add enough uh, wire or antenna element or any of that stuff to make this uh, a quarter wavelength long. So you, you neutralize capacitive reactants. And I've got videos on reactants if you're interested in that by adding inductance. And so that's what we do with this. Now that does come at a little bit of a cost. You do have some insertion loss when you use a coil like this uh, on these types of antennas. At the bottom of this adjustable coil, you can loosen this and then you can pull this out. And it looks like they have these etched in here. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's paint, but it looks like it feels like an etching, which is nice because that means it won't wear off. A scale looks like one all the way up through 18. Um, what would be really cool is if they had frequency designations, but you probably can't do that because you could use this or a different antenna whip at the top. And it would have to take that into consideration. But you adjust this to add inductance. I'm assuming the longer you go, the more inductance you're adding to cancel out any capacitive reactants that you have in this antenna. Now, it says that all of these connectors are uh, 3H24, and I don't have any reason to doubt that. You can just screw this antenna on here. Or you can just add this coil and then screw this antenna on to get to your lower bands. And I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to mount this yet, but I do have this bracket. And this is a uh, 3H24 adapter here. And it looks like I can just screw this baby in. And then what I would do is I would probably attach this and have the other bolts right here to a uh, ground spike or something along those lines mounted into the ground. And then I could just use this SO239 connector for my coaxial cable and attach any ground radials I want to the frame of this particular mount. So let's get this thing set up outside and see how it performs. So I was digging through the parts box and I found this spike. I bought this a long time ago because I was going to use it with a similar style antenna and I just never got around to it. But what's interesting about this is that it has an SO239 connector here. And then it has these grounding options here for your counterpoise. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to clip a counterpoise to the frame here. And uh, we should be okay. Now we have isolation from the center conductor here to this hole on the top. And luckily for me, this hole is the same size as the antenna. And I can just go ahead and I can screw that in and do the needful. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up and uh, show you how we did it. 
we're not going to spend a whole lot of time looking at this, but I did want to show the Amazon webpage that you can order this antenna from. And if you come here, you can read all about this antenna and see the various accessories. So here we are outside in the fresh air, and uh, we're taking a look at the components that we're going to use to set up the antenna. So you can see the antennas. You can see my ground plane clipped on to the ground spike. And here we just have the antenna deployed without the counterpoise uh, or ground plane, as we should call it, just connected in and with the uh, antenna connected to the coil. And what I did is I did a sweep of the antenna fully extended and the coil fully closed because I wanted to see what was going on. If you take a look at this, our sweep starts at 3 megahertz, just below the 80 meter band, and extends to 30 megahertz. I should have made that go all the way up to 50. So you could see the 6 meter band. And you can see that this is not resonant. Now, what I wanted to do is operate on 20 meters, particularly FT8. So I go through the process of tuning the antenna. The antenna took minutes, if that, to deploy. and took about 10 minutes to fully tune in. And most of that was just walking back and forth to the Nano VNA at the end of my coaxial cable. So here you can see the antenna. It was fully extended in this picture. And then I have my ground plane clipped to the base of the spike that went in there. Now, a couple things I wanted to notice. This is just a cheap speaker wire ground plane that I made, and I believe these are 15 feet long. They may be 17 feet. I don't remember when I made them, uh, but I think it's 15 feet. And I should have had a choke in line here to stop any common mode currents coming back to my radio. I do have a CMC choke at the other end of the coaxial cable, but I would, would normally put one here at the antenna feed point as well. And if you take a look at this, not much has changed. It did change a little bit uh, with um, adding the ground plane on, but not enough to make a significant difference, at least at uh, any interested frequency. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to fully extend the coil and then take a look at that and see what it looked like on our Nano VNA. And fully extended, with the antenna fully extended, you can see that uh, we have close to uh, resonance on... Uh, 6.078 with an SWR of 1.68 and we are in the capacitive area of the Smith chart and that's down here where this marker one is this is our equator in the Smith chart anything above this is inductive anything below this is capacitive now you can see here in the green text at the top of the screen so what the antenna is presenting at this point is 38.5 ohms of pure resistance and then negative 19.9 of capacitive reactance. So what I did as I started to tune the antenna in, what I wanted to do is adjust to the coil, not the antenna whip length itself, because I wanted the whip to be as long as possible so I could get maximum currents on the antenna and transferring all my RF out into the atmosphere. And what I'll say is, is that this thing is very, very touchy. Just some very slight movements would go ahead and move the... Um, the tuned or matched portion of the antenna. <clears throat> so here I am on a full sweep. We were looking from 30 to th um, 3 to 30 megahertz. And then you can see our marker number one is down here. We have an SWR 1.15, which is pretty good at uh, 14.070. Now I have it down in the left hand corner. You can see I have uh, 1001 data points. I did not have one at my uh, frequency of interest, 14.074. What you can see here is that we are 48.6 ohms of pure resistance with negative 6.07 uh, in capacitive reactance. And that's represented here just south of the equator on our Smith chart. So what I did is I uh, zoomed in a little bit and now we are looking at 13.5 megahertz to 15.5 megahertz. And you can actually see this antenna is pretty broad banded. We have a really nice section here below uh, two uh, to one SWR, and in our area of frequent or frequency of interest, fourteen point oh seven four. We are at one point one four to one SWR, which is fantastic. Now, what I wanted to mention is is that I was able to set up and deploy this antenna and tune it in about fifteen minutes, give or take, which I thought was really impressive. And it was also pretty impressed with how well I was able to get this dialed into my frequency of interest. Now, if I want to change frequencies, I would have to adjust the antenna again. I would really have to adjust the antenna again if I changed bands. 
But this was first time deploying, setting it up for the first time, and it was quick and it was easy. So you may say, well, Ape, that's all fine and good, but how well did it perform? So after deploying the antenna, this is just a quick chart from PSK Reporter. I operated for about an hour and 15 minutes, and I was able to get heard all over the world. And uh, that is a couple of different continents there. I'm not going to count them up because I'm not sure I'm good at that. But I was really impressed with how well some of the signal reports were, the contacts that I was able to make, and again, with the speed and the ease of deployment. If you ask me, this antenna is a winner. Anyhow, what I'd like to say at this point in time is thanks to Gable Radio for sending me this antenna for my consideration, and thanks to everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.